Hey everyone and welcome back. Again, my name is Keith Gebhardt, your instructor. So I want to take a few minutes in this lecture to kind of go over what Cisco Packet Tracer is, how do we get it installed, uh, what are some other options similar to Cisco Packet Tracer, who this is going to benefit, and what those benefits are. So first of all, Cisco Packet Tracer is a virtual network simulator program that you install on your computers that once you open it, as you can see here, we can create all these different network topologies and these are all simulated networks. We could build whatever we want because inside of here we have a list of all these different routers we have a list of all these different switches we have some wireless devices for example you know this guy and if i open up the gui um right here you can see this is just like your link sys um gui that you would find on your small office home office type routers so it's very very intuitive application that you can utilize for training at an entry level you know, just getting into networking, just getting started, or an entry level exam seeker, such as your Network Plus or CSENT or CCNA type exams. But that's not it. We also have a whole bunch of end user devices from desktops, laptops, servers, uh, printers, IP phones. And I mean, you can see the list here goes on and on. The best part about this application is it is free. And to get this application, you need to create an account with Cisco's netacad.com. So if I open up my web browser here, and I'm in net, you know, I'm right here. You would actually have to go into this website and then you would have to download Cisco Packet Tracer. Now, if I go over here, okay, this is not available on Macs. It's only going to allow you to download it through Windows and Linux. But I know quite a few of you may actually be watching this course on a Mac and wondering, well, what benefits this for me? Well, there's a workaround, okay? And if you go to my YouTube channel, and where's my, that was weird. So you go to the YouTube channel, uh, Learn Tech Training, by the way, subscribe, I love followers. <laughs> uh, install Packet Tracer on a Mac step-by-step -step with Linux. So what that means is we're going to need some kind of VM, you know, instance on your computer to install a flavor of Linux to put Cisco Packet Tracer into. Sounds complicated, but it's very easy. Now, I like VMware Workstation for my Windows computer. Fusion is the version that you would use for Mac, so VMware Fusion. It does cost some money, but I actually recommend this, and I'm not being paid as an advertisement for VMware by any means, but I prefer VMware and I love VMware. It's solid application, it's solid firmware, their support's excellent, it does cost money, but the biggest benefit is you're gonna actually run into VMware software in the real industry, so it's only gonna give you a leg up on understanding and how to work within VMware in itself. But if you don't want to pay the money and you wanna go a free route, you could go VirtualBox, okay? It does the same thing, it's free. It's not so user friendly, I would say. I mean, it's not it's not difficult, but I, I prefer VMware personally. Then we need to install a Linux onto the virtual instance, whether it's VirtualBox or uh, VMware Workstation, right? And the flavor we're going to use is Ubuntu. Again, you can find that on if you Google Ubuntu, you'll find it. It is free. Now, some of the other alternatives are GNS3, which is really really good software. It is free. But the only negative thing is it's going to use real iOS images. Now, that's not the negative part. The negative part about it is, okay, is obtaining those images. Unless you have real equipment to set up a TFTP server to copy the iOS uh, file to your computer and then, you know, import it into GNS3, then you're not going to, uh, GNS3 is not going to be of any use for you. Another thing is it's going to take a bit of a learning curve. It's, uh, it's a lot more advanced of an application. I would usually suggest beginner steer away from it at first, especially if you're newer to computers in, a, in its own right, especially as far as systems administration and networking is concerned together, because there's a lot you got to do with GNS3 on your computer, and then a lot with your network interface cards and then your home network to get it all to communicate properly. But again, GNS3 is an option. Some other options are Boson. Now, that's more proprietary to their own training material and their courses, but it's there. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Cisco recently came out with, well, within the past couple of years, it's called Viral. So if you Google Cisco Viral, you'll find it. That's quite expensive, but it's a yearly subscription, so it's not too, too bad. But that's kind of like GNS3, except they give you the images within it. Now, it is extremely resource intensive. If your computer has less than 16 gigs of RAM, I would not suggest going the viral route. Another thing you could do is Rackspace. Now, this is the typical method I would use for training um, outside of my home state, which is Pennsylvania. If I'm traveling to Canada or anywhere across the country to train CCNA courses, I typically use Rackspace and I like INE.com. Again, I'm not being paid to say that. It's just my own preference. It's available for you. You pay like $200 for 200 hours, you, you get tokens, 
and then you get a login password. Okay, so you schedule a time block that you want to use. You get a username, password, and when you remote in at first, you're being prompted with a KVM switch, which allows you to switch through several different devices. And then when you get into the device itself, you're in, you're in a real Cisco device. So they're pretty cool. And then my old time favorite recommendation to all students is actually using real equipment when you can. The reason for this is because it's only going to benefit you to the fact that a lot of people get so custom to just using a GUI like Cisco Packet Tracer. They pass their exam, they know what they're doing, but then they get into a network closet and they're staring these devices head on, you know, <laughs> face to face. And they're, they're, you can see their eyes. They just kind of like open up like a, you know, a deer in headlights type situation. And they, they just seem like they're so lost because what you see, you know, graphically in this logical topology here is not what it's going to look like physically in a rack space. Now, one neat thing within Packet Tracer is we could create rack spaces. Okay, well, it kind of generates them for us, but we could also manipulate them and create them ourselves. You know, we could, if we go to the navigation here, let me go to Home City. You can see we have our building here. Click in here, we have a network closet with all the devices. Now, this, I didn't create this, this is auto created, but it just gives you an idea of how it does it. But in this course, we will actually go over how to create a physical topology type thing like this as well. It's more helpful than none. It's a great feature that Cisco Packet Tracer has to offer, but again, it's still not having real equipment. So who is Cisco Packet Tracer for? If you are studying for your CompTIA Network Plus, you could benefit from this tremendously because although Network Plus is more, more or less an overview of networking, it's a great certification for the you know beginner, but they're not gonna go into any focus for what, like Juniper with Junos or Cisco with Cisco IOS, et cetera, et cetera. It's more gonna kind of briefly go over, okay, this is switching, this is routing, these are the protocols we use. But that's all theory. There's no practicality to that. So we could go ahead and take Cisco Packet Tracer and put those theories into practice. The benefit from that is, is now you're gaining a little bit more of a leg up because you're using Cisco equipment. And, you know, Cisco is a major player in the industry. Um, you know, most places you go today will have some kind of Cisco equipment in their networking infrastructure as, you know, in some way, shape, form or another. Not all, but majority. So it's only going to give you a leg up. And, you know, then you could start Googling how to implement different things within Cisco Packet Tracer on Cisco routers or devices. Or I have a bunch of like network fundamental courses available that you could dive into as well. Now, at a CCN or CCNA level for you Cisco focused um, people watching this course, it's only going to benefit you tremendously. It's a free utility. It's excellent. The only disclaimer I have is up here I said GNS3 uses real iOS and then, you know, viral, rack space and real equipment. Whenever you can use real equipment, it's always better. Not saying Packet Tracer is bad because it'll completely do its job for you to obtain your CCNA. But you're going to be limited on a lot of the more advanced configurations on the actual iOS for Cisco. For example, there's switching and routing configurations in the CLI. It's going to be slimmed down. It's, it's still using Cisco images. You're still going to have many of the um, stuff or pretty much all the stuff that you need for your CCNA exam. But getting into some more of the more advanced topics you're going to need real Cisco IOS images. So that's kind of why I threw in those other options up here available for you guys. Now, that's also why I said this little guy here, it's not good for anyone studying over their CCNA. For example, the network professional or um, the CCIE or architecture type deals, because you're going to be very limited and it's not going to provide you with any real true benefit. Now, another thing this is going to really benefit is any one of you guys out there in the you know, the technician or the integrations industry. And what I mean by that is security. And I should type in here, let's say physical security. And that's more or less like your card access or uh, maybe CCTV. Okay. We have the capability of doing IOT within Packet Tracer. For example, I go to the house. What if I want to hook up a couple appliances, maybe a fan, uh, maybe a door, <laughs> you know, we could set up a motion detector and a camera. Now I know you know, some of you guys that are in the security industry are going to say, well, cameras these days have motion built in. Yes, they do. But it allows us to build these. That's a siren. This is motion, maybe. Um, we have the ability to do that. And then you can see how they're communicating together. We also have more advanced things like card access reader. So that's a power reader. Card access reader, the actual card itself, you know, your RFID chips that you swipe by the card reader, allow you in. We can set up these different boards, okay? Now these boards run off Python. Essentially these boards are like Raspberry Pis, if you want to think of them that way. You know, okay, so maybe you don't want to use Python. We could always maybe do uh, a visual language, which is going to be blocky, which is kind of like junior high school programming that you would find or JavaScript. And what I, I mean, the visual is 
cool. It's easy to do. It's very easy to learn. You know, for example, a program function. Okay, we could set a variable. This could be my variable uh, to do something. Um, set an item to do something, and then blocky. You just click and drag and drop. This item would go in there, and you just create your program like that. So, really cool features within Cisco Package Trace. It's a really powerful program. Um, again, a lot of end-user devices we have routers or servers rather, with many different services we could implement. We could build web pages on here. We could do syslog, AAA authentication. We could also set up voice networks. Okay, so we could set up some IP phones. If you click in here, these will actually, I mean, it's not powered on, but you know, let me power it on so you could actually see. So click and drag. You can see how intuitive it is. And then we have a phone. We could pick it up. Um, well, it's not plugged in. It's not getting any power. But we could dial. We could pick it up. We could hang it up. So there's a lot of cool things and a lot of cool features within Packet Tracer that's really just going to allow you to learn by doing if you've taken any of my other courses, or if you plan to, you'll always hear me say, learn by doing. That is the best way you're going to learn. You're going to really retain that information. So this is Cisco Packet Tracer, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of cool things to it, and we're going to kind of dissect it as we move forward through this course. So I will see you in the next one.